Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. This is part four of our fire damaged AR series. I'm going to take a look at what we have in our container here of Evapa Rust. Here's our upper receiver. Doesn't look bad. I'm going to move this over off to the side. Let's look for our gas tube. There it is. Still got some burnt plastic on it. Move that off to the side. Here's our ejection port cover. Not bad. Our buffer weights. All the rust is gone. There is an ejection port cover spring in here along with the barrel, but sort of dirty. I'll find that in a little bit. Here's our barrel. <clears throat> now, to be fair, I have pulled this out of this and scrubbed it several times in my parts washer. The parts washer just has a, a aviation grade simple green in it, degreaser. Um, and what I've done is basically just taken a nylon brush. These are the only two things that I've used is a nylon brush and a chopstick. Nylon brush to scrub it things to try to remove any uh, rust or anything like that that may have not been removed. But the chopstick is great. And even if you're not working on a fire damage gun, these areas where we have melted plastic, you can see right here, I can take the back end of the chopstick. And after this is soaked a little while, look, melted plastic is just going away. Got an area right here. Let me see if I can scrape that away. And I did. Got some here on the handguard cap. Let's see if I can get it. Boom. So just an idea, something that's not aggressive. I don't like to use things like wire brushes when I don't have to. So just to give you an idea of what we're working with, I'm not trying to hide anything off camera. It's just very mundane type things. There's no reason to be videoing me scrubbing this off and blow, blowing it off with air compressor. But that's what we're going to do. You may have noticed that the bench has a, a new pad on it. It was getting a little cruddy and uh, that kind of stuff bothers me. So I put a new bench pad on, reorganized stuff. But these are the parts. We're going to clean off in the parts washer. And then we're going to use the air compressor to blow it off. And then we'll take a closer look. So we're going to pause the video in a, in a minute. <clears throat> we're going to clean things off, blow it off. And then we'll start the video back up and continue with our examination. All right, we're back. We've got everything cleaned off. We'll take a closer look now that we've got all the uh, liquid blown off. You can see that we still have some remnants of um, the burnt material right in here. Let me get one of my pointers. And I'll just use a punch. We still have some burnt plastic here. In this area, there's still some under the handguard cap. There's still some stuck to the barrel here. A couple of various spots on the front of the barrel. Right there. But overall, not bad. You can see there's some pitting. Let me get this on the bench so we can focus better. There's some pitting here. But overall, I think things turned out pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this barrel so we can take a closer look at things. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to take the muzzle device off. So I'm going to put a Midwest URR in my vise. I'm going to take just another upper to hold things in place. If you remember in the previous video, we had a heck of a time getting these two things apart. When I was cleaning things, I can see why, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, I suspected either this warped or the upper warped. This is a newer upper. It is a bad upper, but look. Let's see if the barrel fits. And it is a BCM, so these are a little tight. Let me grab another upper that's not a BCM, because these are often referred to as thermal fit. Let me just get another random upper. Let's see if this one fits. There we go. So we'll just use this to sort of hold things in place.
What is this one? Crushed. And of course, it's hard for me to slide it on there. That's why this is in the bin of shame. So let's get this muzzle device off. That's tight. Threads look good. Crush washer still got some corrosion in there from the initial damage. So let me wipe this off. Let me grab a brush. Threads don't look bad. Looks like the front sight base detent. That's still got some spring to it, so I'm just going to leave that assembly in there. That spring didn't go bad. So I'll just leave that alone. Let's take the barrel back out, and let's get the delta ring assembly apart. Ring. Weld spring. Doesn't look too bad. Still has some give to it. And there's some burnt plastic in there. And our barrel nut. In order to get that off, we have to take the front say base off. We're going to look inside that with a bore scope here in a minute. Also device, still got a little bit of rust there. That won't hurt anything. We have some corrosion on it. Let's see a little damage from my uh, my wrench. I probably should have hit it with some penetrating fluid, but we were just moving along. So what we'll do is these all look good. I'm gonna put these right here next to our other parts. These are all the parts that we've cleaned already. We sprayed them with oil in a previous video. So these are all the things we think we can use again. The flash hider there. I don't think we're going to be able to reuse the crush washer. Normally you can't. Um, dust cover rod. All the corrosion has gone off that. The dust cover itself. It's discolored. But all the rust is gone. That spring there is a little weak. Let's give it a test on the upper. We'll be able to use this. So dust cover. Assembly still good. Put that off to the side. Now the one thing I did find the spring in our bin. And let me get a new one just to show you the comparison. See how both of the legs are sort of laying parallel to one another. And here's a new spring. You can see how one leg sticking up, so it's lost a good bit of tension. So I'm gonna throw this in with the rest of the bad springs, if you will. And we are gonna replace the Ejection port cover spring. I think we could use this. We could just maybe wind it one more cool, but it'll have probably too much tension. So we're going to put this in with our bad springs. It might not be bad, but we're just going to call it bad. And we're going to throw this in with... Uh, well, no, that's a new spring. Let me put it over here. Here's where we have our replacement springs. We have a new hammer spring. That's a spring co. We have a new ejection port cover spring or dust cover spring. A new ejector spring, this is a spring co, a disconnect spring, and a colt extractor spring. I don't have very many uh, spring co, four coils or five coils, so I'm going to revert to the colt. Um, I did break this when I was disassembling, so we need a new rear takedown pin. And of course, all of the roll pins on the gun I'm replacing. Now, that has nothing to do with it being a fire damage gun. It has to do with my standards or my protocols are when I take a pin out, I replace it with a new one. If you use spiral pins, you can technically reuse these as long as you put them back into the same bore that you took them from. And that's another reason I like them. Where the standard split pins, you're supposed to replace those. 
So we are going to put these in. It has nothing to do with being fire damaged. It has to do with being disassembled, and this is my standard. So could we use the old uh, split pins? Yes, but it would create another possible failure point, and I'm trying to make sure that we eliminate as many failure points as possible. Um, we do have some other parts I have laid out here. We have some gas rings, which we may have to use. We have one of the takedown detent springs. Um, one of them was shortened heavily from the heat, so we may have to replace that. And these are replacement parts for the forward assist. If you remember in the previous video, I said the ratchet wasn't working, and I think we may have a problem. So I have a new spring, a plunger, a pin, and the pawl for the forward assist. So these are possibles. This is a tungsten weight. We're going to convert the non-marked, non-heavy buffer to an H buffer by putting one tungsten weight in it. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get this upper receiver apart. I'm gonna slide this on. And we're going to try to knock this apart. I'm just gonna get my hammer. Your pin, we'll replace that. And let's see about our forward assist. Oh, the spring's gone. I'll grab a new one just so you can see the difference. Drop things. All right, we'll go to the bench just to give you a side-by-side. -side. Original spring, good spring. So let's put that into our bin of old springs. Put this into our pile of good springs. Let's pull the upper off. We'll place this back over here. Put my tools back. And let's see what's going on with our forward assist. We have very little tension. The plunger isn't working right. So I believe that the spring in here has died. It is moving a little bit, but it just does not have the proper tension to it. So this would be a no-go. The ratchet itself looks like it's okay. The plunger looks like it's okay. But I don't think we're going to be able to reuse the spring. So. Let's go ahead and put new Ford Assist Paul spring in our Paul. And we're going to need a new pin for the Ford Assist Paul because we're not going to replace or reuse the old one. And these we'll just put away. We don't need those. So far, we definitely needed to replace the Ford Assist spring. The hammer spring was questionable. Dust cover spring was questionable, the ejector was questionable, we actually repurposed that, we're going to use it for the selector. We probably could have gotten away with the original extractor and disconnect spring, but we're going to replace it and the forward assist spring was questionable. So we still have a couple optional pieces that we may have to attack. Gas rings, one of the detent springs, and a tungsten weight. <clears throat> So, one thing that I noticed when I was cleaning the upper, remember how hard it was to knock the barrel out? I actually threw it onto the floor when I was bashing on it. This barrel goes into the other upper receivers we have, so I don't believe that this is warped in any way. Now, you could, like I said in, a, in the previous video, you could take a mic to it or a uh, caliper, try to measure to see if it's out of round. But what the problem is, is the upper. I don't know if you guys can see this clearly, but right along here, It's like silver in color. Let me try to get better lights. Actually, let me come over to the vice. We have a light here. Right there. Be able to see that in the video. So our barrel nut was extremely easy to remove. What I suspect happened is the barrel nut was actually tightened properly. 
And I can't say what exact value they had it torqued to, but I believe it had sufficient torque on it to hold or tension things in place. And when this upper receiver got hot, it relieved tension and the bore here collapsed slightly, which removed tension from the threads and the barrel nut. So that's why the barrel nut came off easy and why the barrel was difficult to remove because this bore constricted as the threads were pulled, stretched, and collapsed slightly. But it's right here along the side. Now I haven't measured this, but you can see where we pulled the barrel out. It's right there, plain as day. And there's no other spots anywhere inside here. So sort of like, let's say a flat spot right in this area. So can we use this upper? I don't know yet. We need to do some more checks. But in a pinch, yes, we could take a reamer and just make this round again. What is this right there? Oh, that was some burnt plastic. Just a little piece. All right. Let's see if we have any severe warping between the upper and lower. And what we're going to do, without using any gauges, we're going to use our original pin for the front. We're going to pop it in. And then we're going to see if we can get this rear pin into the back. And it does go. So there wasn't so much warpage that these pins misaligned heavily. Let's use a little surface plate and see if the upper receiver worked or the lower receiver worked. And technically this would fall under the gauging category. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. This is a little surface plate here. We're probably going to have to go a little bit low with the camera here or I'll bring it up. but. Essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay the upper like this and if it has warpage to it I'll be able to rock it and I can't. There's no play. So the upper didn't twist like this. I'm sorry the lower didn't twist like that. So lower, a little bit of force. There's no rocking going on. That's my hand moving. So I don't think this twisted. Let's check the upper. We'll go this way with it. upper warped. Let's grab another upper just to see. Here's the BCM. Let's see if this one... Nope. Let's check the rail. It's got a crack on the front. That's why this is in the bin of shame. But upper's still true. Let's put it on the flat here. No wiggle. And I know this is really hard to see on camera. You'll just have to take my word for it that that is true. This one doesn't lay quite flat. This being warped doesn't make it dangerous, but what can happen is, is when the gun is assembled, in some cases it can make it hard to remove or push the pins in. We don't have that problem. Um, it could be difficult for the bolt carrier to track in a straight manner. Maybe when it goes into the buffer tube, it gets bound up. So we'll have to test that when we get everything all mocked up. But this upper receiver is definitely warped. Now, this doesn't contain a lot of pressure. So, could this be used in a pinch? Possibly. All of this stuff that we're doing is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not saying that you should have a fire damage gun and then depend on it for some serious use. Or say, well, Chad did it in a video. It's obviously safe. Every situation is unique. All right. Let me put this up. this out. Alright, and let's take the Ford Assist apart. You have to be careful when you grab the Ford Assist. That was our drill that I hit. Sorry about the camera shaking. Um, this has thin walls here, so if you grab this in the vise, you could crush the body of the forward assist. So you have to be really careful about how you grab onto this so you don't cause any damage. So what I'm going to do is just grab it like this. And if I lose that roll pin, I don't care. Oh, 
There it is. Come over to the bench. There's our forward assist, Paul. P A W L. I just shot the detent across the table, so I may have to get the one out of the bin. We've lost one of our first pieces. It may be gone forever. Well, I have one at least. And here is our spring. Let me get my little spring puller. There's our old spring. And here is a good one. See the difference? So far, every spring in the gun has been suspect except for the extractor spring and the trigger spring. We're still replacing the extractor spring. I'm going to see if we can reuse the trigger spring. So let's put this bad spring into our bin and put our Spring there. We're going to pause the video and I'm going to look for that detent. And if not, I'll go grab one out of my parts bin. All right, we looked and looked. I couldn't find the uh, the Ford Assist detent. I gave up, was going to grab a new one, and then Donna saw on our patch here. There it is. So we found it. So we don't have to replace it. More fire damaged parts to reuse. So we're going to take these parts and we're going to put them over here where our unlubricated stuff is. I'll put some lubricant on that. And we'll get into it. The last thing we're gonna check in the video is going to be the barrel. But real quick, here's our gas tube. We still have some melted plastic on it. I'm not even gonna mess with trying to take that off. It'll just burn when I test it, so we'll just leave it in place. So the flared portion here on the gas tube looks good. Of course, I'll gauge that when we get to that point. But let's see if we have any obstructions in here. This is some weed trimmer line. Push it all the way to the end here and we'll probably see it poke out in the port. And there's some nasty stuff in there. Yuck. So we'll clean this out some more. Let's see what it looks like when we pull it out. Yeah, some green stuff. But it doesn't have any obstructions. That's the important thing. So a little bit more cleaning needs to be done on the inside of the gas tube. We don't want to shoot it with that goop in there, but done. Let's go ahead and consider the crush washer done. I'll grab a new one and the video. Um, going to put that in the bin though. All right, let's start working on the barrel. First thing I need to do is I need to make sure that the inside is clean. So what I'm going to do, which I rarely do, is I'm actually going to use a bronze brush and I'm going to clean the barrel a little bit before we stick the bore scope in. So I'm going to drop bronze brush through there. Then I run a couple patches with a jag and we'll get it all cleaned up. So let me mock it all up in my vise so we can clean this. guide not that we really have to worry about damaging such a nice barrel right but just gonna mock it all up let me get some bore cleaner up here really shouldn't use it on this brush because it's going to attack it but we're just doing a a, a quick sweep making a heck of a mess but feels a little rough in there come back through I don't think I've ever cleaned the barrel on camera, so weird angles. I did 
don't want to do that. One more time. I'm going to come around the back side and get a better look. Still coming out pretty dirty. Let me grab a few more. I'll pick all the patches up. Show them on camera if anyone wants to see them. I think Donna was trying to get them on camera, so we'll get a close look at them all. Ooh. This is just the natured alcohol that I'm using. Try to strip any of the uh, the barrel cleaner that's in the barrel out. The barrel cleaner that I'm using, Wipeout, really isn't a fast acting bore cleaner. You can use whatever you like. Still coming out pretty gross. We'll go through a few more passes and then we'll just call it quits and take a look at things. We're not building a precision rifle here, we're just trying to bring it to life. We can always spend more time cleaning it after it's put back together. Uh, what have we used, 200 patches so far? This is the most boring part of the video I think I've ever made. Use what I have here, and that's it. Three more left. That one's a little better. patches off the ground. These are some of the first ones. Pretty gross. And that was at the end. So, good bit of fouling on it. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to pause the video. I'm going to get the laptop out so we don't have any more of the cell phone awful things that I did in a previous video. I apologize for that. 
Um, we're going to get a good look at the inside of this barrel and uh, we'll lubricate some parts and then we'll get ready for part five which will be our full inspection and gauging video. Be right back. All right we're back. We have our laptop set up. We have the nice bore scope laid out on the bench. We're going to take a look inside this barrel see what we can find. Real quick before we go in here we did clean out the bore itself but we didn't clean the chamber, so I'm just going to take a cotton swab and just rub it in the chamber just to make sure that I'm getting anything that might be left in there out of the chamber area so we can get a nice clean look at what's going on. And as you can see, it was a little dirty. Throwing swabs at Donna. Earlier we had an incident when the camera wasn't running where the air compressor hose retracted. Lots of drama ensued. All right, that's clean enough. As my uncle used to say, we're not building a church. Okay, let's take a look inside this barrel. So, fire this up. Make sure that I don't drop this. And in we go. We're going to have to kill some lights so we can eliminate the glare. How do we look on our screen here? Do we have glare? A little bit. Better? Okay, perfect. All right, we are going into the barrel now. Here's our barrel extension. Let me change the focus a little. Doesn't look too bad. We're going to go up into the chamber. All right, here's the chamber. We can see a little bit of pitting. Chamber actually doesn't look too bad. We have some machining marks from when the chamber was originally cut. Sometimes that can be polished out. But as far as corrosion goes, I mean, I messed up with you guys with the uh, the footage with the, the barrel, but I did not think it was going to come out this clean. I mean, this chamber looks like a barrel that's seen a couple thousand rounds. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit of corrosion there. Those aren't very deep pits. Like I said, I've seen regular use barrels look much worse than this. So let's move the barrel down a little bit. We're going to go up into the neck area. Let me change focus again. This is the neck area. Got a little bit of corrosion there. Not bad overall. Here's our throat. A little bit of pitting here in the throat area. It looks pretty shiny. This might be a chrome line barrel. A little bit of pitting there. Let's go further down the barrel. Look at the inside of this barrel. It looks pretty good. I'm honestly shocked. Uh, there's some corrosion. Yeah, we got a good bit of corrosion in here. You can see where it's pitted. That might be the chrome where it's pitted through the chrome. Or it could have had issues due to heat exposure. Look at those defects there. Pretty nasty looking. None of this stuff means that it's unsafe. It just might pick up a lot of fouling when it's being shot. Doesn't mean it's not going to be accurate. Let's flip the barrel around. And 
and we'll go in from the front side. I want to take a look at the at the crown. So we're going to go in and let's take a look. not cooperating. There we go. There's our crown. It looks pretty bad. There's a good bit of corrosion here at the muzzle. Look at that. The crown's got some heavy pitting in it. So let me kill some of the light. There we go. Pretty heavy corrosion on the crown. So this will probably need some touch up. If we want to squeeze some consistency out of the barrel. I'm not saying it won't shoot, but just one of those things I like to look at. But look at this bore. This looks pretty bad. Again, this does not mean it's unsafe. It's just heavily pitted. There's some cotton patch from us cleaning. Yeah, the corrosion goes down pretty far. The fire could have caused some of this. A lot of the times when a gun's involved in fire damage, it's not always the heat. Sometimes it has to do with the humidity, moisture from them putting things out with the water. And it'll lead to rapid corrosion. I'm going to try to find the gas port so we can determine how many rounds have been put through it. There's a good bit of corrosion in this barrel. I'm going to pull this back out. Right about there. And there's our gas port. See right here, we have a little bit, a little bit of erosion there. So this gun had a little bit of use. Some people were really uh, interested in the buffer being in backwards. Believe it or not, this is not what you should do. But an AR-15 can, in certain situations, run with the buffer installed in reverse. You should never do it. Um, but I have seen guns that work. They don't work reliably, but they will cycle sometimes. Um, so this gun definitely saw a little bit of use. Maybe it was fired, and then the gun was taken apart clean and put together wrong and was never shot again with the buffer in backwards. But this erosion indicates at least a couple hundred rounds in my experience. So the gun has definitely seen some use. But overall, barrel, it's got a good bit of corrosion in. Let me put, turn the lights back on. Barrel's got a good bit of corrosion in it, but I don't think it's unusable at this point. We still have some evaluation to make with gauging. We're going to use a barrel straightness gauge to see if the barrel warped. It takes a good bit of heat to kill a barrel. Um, the crown, pretty badly damaged from corrosion. We can touch that up. But I do think it is going to be usable. So before we conclude with part four, what we're going to do is we're going to try to fix the three damaged detents. I've been letting them soak in acetone to try to soften up some of the, uh, the melted material that's on them. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to fix the detent for the selector. So we're going to use a really expensive method to fix this. We're going to use a drill. Poor man's lathe here.
we have this raised area right there. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but there's a pretty nasty burr. So we're going to get rid of that. Scotch bright. I want my bore scope away from this thing. There we go. Still got a little bit of a burr right there. And I have these detents. We could replace it, but. Like I said, for the sake of fun, anything that can be reused that isn't going to severely affect things, we're going to try to reuse it. No, I'm be using the lathe. for this type of repair so it's more precise but I just want to get all the debris off of it so this thing will move freely inside the lower let's see if it goes into the lower now without binding Nope. Let's try to fix the front and rear detents. What did I do with those? Here they are. not want to hold. Again, I'm not trying to do a precise operation here. This is not something I would normally do. But if we were sort of just having fun, let's say it was the apocalypse, right? We don't have access to a lot of stuff. And we're finding wreckage and burnt out buildings and vehicles. Try to make it work. It's the end of the world. You can call me Apocalypse Bob Ross. Just a joke, a joke guys. Don't take it too seriously. Let's see if these will work. Let me grab a good spring. Put a rear pin in. That does not want to go. That one went. Let's see if we have enough tension if this was mocked up. So we've got one working. We'll put that off to the side. We got a little bit more work with this one. Let's see if this one will fit. Gonna clean it up just a tad bit more.
I can see where it's flared out right there. Let's try to fix it. Let's just use it in the back again. Let's see if it'll fit. It does. We have success. You ever get one of these stuck weed trimmer line? It's your friend. All right, so we fixed the front and rear detent. I'm still not sure of the one spring that we have that shortened. Let's try to fix this selector. Put a little bit more time into it, and then we're going to call it quits. I don't think this is going to work because of the flared portion, but we'll give it a go. Maybe. See if she fits in the lower. Let me get it in my hand so you can get a closer look. We still have some deformation, but we'll see. It's a long video. We're at almost 50 minutes. There we go. It works. Detents are fixed. Again, just for the sake of entertainment and fun. We could have replaced those. I have bins full of them. So, before we call this video done, here's the items that we are replacing. New crush washer because we don't want to reuse the old one. Rear pin because I broke the one. All new pins because this is my style. You can do your gun as you wish. Let's check our gas range real quick. We're going to do that in the physical. They still got tension. So we're not going to change the gas rings. So put the gas rings back. The only thing that's up in the air is one spring, and we're going to convert the buffer out to an H. Um, the next video will be all of our gauging before we go to video six, which will be assembly. Stay tuned, and as always, thanks for watching.